On today's episode, we have the new full self-driving beta 10 release, Tesla using lasers for windshield wipers, the Starship Super Heavy getting one step closer to launch, Tesla Energy arriving in England, how a proposed EV incentive for America leaves Tesla behind, more government funding for Giga Berlin, and another leaked image of Model Y production in Giga Texas. So let's get going. It happened. Tesla followed through with the release of their new full self-driving beta on Friday, September 10th, giving testers the first large step improvement to the software since the release of version nine in early July. I've gone ahead and watched a few videos so far that show the new interface and how the update performs. In short, it's cool, but I wouldn't call it mind blowing. It's clearly better than the previous versions, but still not quite there in terms of being ready for a wider rollout. The on-screen display definitely looks more stable and less jittery. It does a really cool pullback and zoom out move when the car gets to an intersection as well. Most notably, there are still no visualizations for emergency vehicles, even when lights are flashing. As far as the driving performance goes, it's obviously more confident than previous versions in most situations but it still becomes very hesitant in more difficult ones. It feels like every time the driver tries to just wait it out and let the car make a decision on its own, they end up getting honked at and creating a bunch of road rage from drivers behind them. It's not the worst thing ever. I guess it depends on how angry the average person in your city tends to be. And then there are unfortunately still some cases where we can see that the car is just not obeying the lane lines on the road not recognizing signs, and even still trying to crash itself. In one AI addict video, it looks like his car actually drives up onto a curb before he can pull it away. I'm also noticing that for turning right on a red or intersections with a flashing red light, like when the traffic signals are broken, the car still requires a driver input. It won't advance on its own, and then it seems to perform pretty badly when it does try and go through the intersection it looks like Tesla is still hung up on this problem of decisiveness. Elon is already promising that version 10.1 will give the cars more confidence in situations where they have to creep forward to get a better view, and they will even be able to quickly reverse away from danger if they go out too far. Version 10 is pretty close, but it doesn't look like it's quite there yet for a wider release. Will Tesla make it for Elon's target of a download button on or around September 25th? I'm gonna go with probably not from what we're seeing so far. We know that Tesla is trying to move away from conventional windshield wipers in their concept designs for the new Roadster and the Cybertruck, but what are they planning to use instead? How about freaking laser beams? Tesla's patent for laser windshield wipers filed in 2019 has been granted by the United States Patent Office. According to the patent filing, a pair of laser beams will shoot out of the hood and irradiate a region of the glass windshield. There's a bunch of complicated patent speak here, but basically it's saying that the system will be able to detect any debris that is accumulating on the windshield. Assuming debris is a blanket term for water, snow, or whatever else ends up on the windshield, then based on the accumulation of the debris, the system will decide the exposure level of the laser beam needed to clear it and pulse the laser in a way that would prevent it from shooting beyond the depth of the glass, or something like that. It is a cool idea for sure. It seems a little less practical than the other windshield wiper alternative that Tesla patented a couple of years back that had an electromagnetic blade device. On the patent illustration, we can actually see a bunch of points on the car highlighted, not just the windshield. So while we're all focused on the windshield, I think it actually might be more likely that Tesla is eyeing this as a method to keep just the camera windows clean, which would sound like an improvement over just blasting them with fluid and hoping for the best. Obviously, any design that limits the number of mechanical parts that can break or wear out is a good thing, just as long as they can figure it out so that no one is taking a laser beam to the face while driving. You don't want to get those in your eye. Elon Musk has said that static fire testing for the SpaceX Super Heavy booster is set to begin very soon. The booster has been returned to the orbital launch mount for the second time now and has been refitted with 29 Raptor engines. 
According to the existing timeline, the booster should have completed a cryoproofing test and be prepped for the first of many static fire tests. We can see the thrust section of the booster looking much more complex this time around, with a bunch of extra plumbing and wiring attached to the outside of the body. It's kind of crazy just how much of the workings of the rocket are visible right now. You can really get a sense of just how complex this whole system is. The next big question is just how many of the 29 engines are going to be lit for the static fire. To date, the highest number of Raptors that have been fired at once is just three, and we don't know how SpaceX plans to ramp up that number over the testing phase. We don't even know if it's possible to test them all together while still holding the booster down and not breaking anything. So that's going to be interesting to see. Elon said during his interview with Everyday Astronaut that his biggest fear with the booster is blowing up on the launch stand. Elon refers to the launch tower as stage zero and said that this structure will be much harder to replace than the booster or ship. So long as it survives, Elon will consider the launch a victory. The expansion of Tesla's energy business has now taken them to the United Kingdom with a new large scale battery storage project breaking ground in England that will be the largest in the country. The projected capacity of this project will be 99 megawatts of electricity storage and will be making use of the Tesla Megapack battery. The installment is being built in the southwest of the country near the city of London. This isn't the first Megapack site in the UK, but will be by far the most powerful, generating nearly three times the output of anything they are using today. Grid scale storage projects like this are badly needed in the country that has been experiencing wild swings in electricity pricing due to supply issues. The UK does use a lot of renewable energy sources like wind and solar, but they don't have a reliable system to regulate that electricity. So when the wind stops blowing and the sun stops shining, that means that the old coal and gas fired peaker plants still need to be utilized. That costs the utility companies a lot of money to do and results in a kind of surge pricing for consumers. We know that large battery storage like the Megapack is essential to eliminating the need for peaker plants because they can fill those gaps in the flow of electricity. It's expected that the new site will be able to deliver a full 99 megawatts of power consistently for two hours. The Democratic Party in the United States has come back with a new draft for their updated electric vehicle incentive package, and it's managed to give Tesla an even bigger snub than the first draft. So the first time we heard about the EV incentive package, it was promising to reinstate the $7,500 credit for all EV sales. Bump that up to $10,000 for cars made in the USA, and bump even higher to $12,500 for cars made in America by unionized workers. That would keep Tesla short of the top tier rebate due to union bias, but still give them an edge as an American made brand. Seems mostly fair. Now things are different and that bias towards the established automakers is painfully obvious. The rewrite of the bill keeps the top tier $12,500 rebate for union factories only and eliminates the middle tier for vehicles made in the US. That leaves Tesla back in the $7,500 category with everyone else and delivers no incentive for purchasing a vehicle made in America with American parts. The credit will eventually become exclusive to American made cars, but not until five years from now. Elon hasn't been shy to point out that this new change is obviously there to favor the United Auto Worker Union and the Ford Motor Company. Elon wrote on Twitter, this is written by Ford slash UAW lobbyists as they make their electric car in Mexico. Not obvious how this serves American taxpayers. It was pretty clear in the first draft of the bill that the Mustang Mach-E would have been penalized for being made outside of the US and would have not qualified for the same rebate level as Tesla, even though Tesla are a non-unionized automaker. But now that's all been amended to make sure that Tesla gains literally zero competitive advantage from the bill, which is not surprising at this point, but it is still disappointing. The one very real positive of the new draft is that this credit has been shifted from a tax refund to the point of sale. So instead of just being able to pay less or zero at tax time, EV buyers will actually get a reduced price tag on their car when they purchase it which is the way it should have always been, but progress is progress. 
The German federal government and local government of Brandenburg, home of the new Tesla Gigafactory, are working to arrange a new round of funding for Tesla's battery factory. On September 7th, Brandenburg Economy Minister Jörg Steinbach told the cabinet of ministers that he planned to sign an administrative agreement with the federal government on the conditions for co-financing the research and production of Tesla battery cells. This deal would inject 120 million euros of new funding into Tesla's Giga Berlin facility in the short term, but according to recently released information, Tesla may qualify to receive funding of over 1 billion euros from the second European battery cell program established by Important Projects of Common European Interest, or IPCEI. The Federal Economy Ministry said there was still no final amount confirmed to fund the Tesla battery factory. It's most likely the funding that is available to Tesla will depend on the output of their factory. Elon is saying that the first phase of battery production in Germany will hit 50 gigawatt hours worth of cells, and in the future, Elon expects to see 200 or even 250 gigawatt hours of production, making it the largest battery factory in the world. So while the US government is dropping the ball, the Europeans seem pretty eager to throw money at Tesla to help them grow. Tesla Model Y castings are beginning to stack up in impressive numbers at the new Giga Texas plant just outside of Austin. A Snapchat video put up by someone on site shows what could be hundreds, maybe thousands of Model Y castings on the property as Tesla begins to work toward the initial production of the all electric crossover. Or at least that's what we can assume we are looking at. It's a little difficult to get past the camera work here. I've literally seen better quality footage of the Sasquatch than this new Gigafactory video, but it's always cool to get a new look inside at what they are up to, and we can clearly see that the Gigapress machines have been hard at work already. For more Tesla news delivered straight to your inbox, make sure to subscribe to our Tesla Space newsletter. We keep you up to date on all things Elon Musk, Tesla, SpaceX, Neuralink, and Boring Company in one quick and fun to read package. Link in the description to sign up. It's the teslaspace.com. And make sure to drag our emails over into your primary inbox so we don't get lost in the promotions tab. If you want to continue to learn about everything regarding Tesla, SpaceX, and Elon Musk, we've got two more video options for you on the screen to check out. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it, and subscribe to our channel for weekly content just like this.